Welcome to the low clutch pedal on my Defender. There's essentially no resistance till about there. And then that's where the clutch actually starts to engage from. And I'll show you how difficult it is to get in the gear. Bite your points there. Now the problem with hydraulic clutch systems is that you don't know whether it's the master cylinder or the slave cylinder that's failed or even the hose so that's your first problem is you don't know which one has failed second problem is that even if you have replaced the one that has failed the other one will probably won't be far behind it because of extra pressure from the new component in the system blah 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 so really if you get a problem like a low clutch pedal um, really you need to change everything so I'm just going to show you what I've what I've spent my hard-earned cash on master cylinder this master cylinder <clears throat> uh, is a genuine new takeoff actually this came from a Puma that was uh, converted to automatic so this is a new takeoff came with the whole pedal assembly um, this is what a genuine Puma uh, master cylinder looks like and it's the same pretty much I think for most defenders I'm not sure about earlier vehicles but um, it's the same same part the part number changed uh, a couple of times but the parts essentially the same thing the only thing that changes is the adapter that goes on the out outlet um, so that should be good the current one that's on there I suspect it is the master cylinder that's failed because the current one on there doesn't have a brand and I can't remember uh, where I got it from or what the brand was if there was one um, what is on there at the moment is a TRW slave cylinder and they're generally quite a good brand so it's probably not this that's failed um, but I've gone for another one anyway um, they're pretty meaty this was about 10 quid there is an AP one it's about 25 quid but I thought this was a good enough quality I didn't have to spend the extra 15 quid um, oh no, this is FTC 5072. And then while I'm in there, I might as well change the clutch hose uh, for another one. This one seems like quite a good quality part. It's um, crimped. It's quite solid. It's actually got stuff stamped on it. I don't know if that's Nelson as a brand or this something else but uh, it feels like a quality part. So I'm gonna jump through just some of the steps that I went in replacing my hydraulic system on the clutch. Cracked off the, the flexible pipe first because it's a bugger to do it once you've taken the cylinder off. And then I set about draining the fluid whilst it was still on the vehicle so I had gravity and I could drain it from the pipe into a suitable bottle. My clutch fluid always seems to go quite dark very quickly. And then I needed to remove the pedal housing for the master cylinder to be able to remove that. So I had to take off all the, the, the matting on the inside of the footwell to get out the six bolts from underneath. It's a bloody pain, the access is restricted. And then I take off the air filter housing as well. Gives you a bit more room so I can get the one of the union spanners on to be able to undo the adapter in the pipe from the master cylinder. You can see here, access is quite restricted because of the pipe as well. You get the, the spanner down in this direction where the air filter would have been. Probably should have kept the, the pedal box still attached before I did this, but that's what being a DIY mechanic is all about. It's a little bit tricky at times and you learn as you go along. And the problem here is, I'd done this previously before, but when you're pulling out, the pedal does have to move into the down position to be able to get it out, which then of course squirts all the fluid out. So that ends up spraying brake fluid all over your engine bay and your wings. And I've done this before and I should have remembered, but there we go. It's getting a bit caught up from underneath, really, if you've got an assistant that makes this job so much easier because they can see, because you've got to twist the pedal because the pedal doesn't fit through sideways you've got to twist it so that it will actually fit up through the the gap and it's free been 
weeping out here and losing fluid. I'm not entirely sure you could do this on the vehicle, but doing it off the vehicle is so much easier. These nuts are a little bit tricky. I've got uh, a narrow, a thin spanner I used just for this job, so I can get in there on the nut. I just about see down there, that's all wet on the bottom of the rubber boot. So yeah, it's the master cylinder that's leaking there. gasket that's supposed to go on here. It used to, originally it was a metal gasket. Uh, sometime around T5 I think they changed it to a fibre or wash rubber gasket, something like that. Uh, I put silicon on here last time. Let's take a look inside. That rubber's perished a little bit. So if this rubber's gone maybe the Union goes on with a new copper washer. There is a five eighths. And just nip it up. These nuts on here. It's fiddly as hell. You need probably about seven hands to be able to get this in. Someone else may have a better way of doing this, but I had to try and get it in, brace it, get the nut on, and then spin it on. Always the way. Third time lucky. And then when it comes to free play, I'm going to make sure that when it's clamped on tight, that the the, the shaft moves about one and a half mil to the space there. It means that the push rod isn't constantly pushing on the end of the cylinder. Ratchet spanners are your friends. And there it is. All back together. Um, the trick here is to put the pipe on the slave cylinder first and then feed it up through in here. The bottom nut on this one, 17 mil, and the locking nut just above it is uh, 11 sixteenths. And then the, the the union up here, that's 9 sixteenths. And then you finally put the slave cylinder in, tighten these up, grease the push rod, and then uh, finally tighten this here, which is uh, 17 mil. And don't forget to put the bleed nipple at the top. And the master cylinder is in. Now this is the way I bleed it, with the, the easy bleed. I find it works particularly well on clutches. Um, sometimes you've got to push the pedal before the fluid actually starts flowing. Um, but getting this back in was a lot more straightforward than getting it out. And for the pressure on the easy bleed, I use an old Bike in a tube saves them to get the spare wheel off the bonnet, and the spare wheel is invariably too much pressure anyway. So, uh, as you can see, it is a very old bike in a tube, but it gives enough pressure. I pump it up to 20 psi. Um, it's very portable, very easy to use. There is the finished pedal. See, free play is about that much now. Very nice, firm action all the way to the bottom. Hardly any play. In the, in the pedal and no squeaking all the adjustment in here is you just got to get uh, the bottom of the pedal to the floor without the mat on make sure that's 140 millimeters and uh, jobs are good bleeding's quite straightforward I didn't show you that because there's tons of places you can see how that's done and I think everyone knows but this clutch is now very positive I don't know if it's genuine just because it's totally adjusted well or it's a genuine master cylinder or what but this feels a lot better than the old one or that's because my old cylinder was failing and uh, 
Well, there were times when you would press the pedal and it felt like there was a delayed reaction from the clutch uh, actually disengaging. So uh, that was probably the master cylinder failing, to be honest. So this just feels, it just feels great. The biting point is around about there. So you've got loads of pedal, pedal travel after that. So um, very pleased with that. So that was just a video about some of the steps I took to replace my clutch hydraulic system because of the low pedal I had. Hope you find it useful. Give us a thumbs up if it was. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.